welcome to a Homespun House podcast. My name is Molly and I will be the host of your show today. It seems like it's been a while, but I feel like lately it always seems like it's been a while. I am dressed very cozy in many layers today. I have hand knit socks on, jeans, which jeans. <laughs> um, I have a long sleeve shirt on and then I have this thick oversized baby blue vintage sweater that I purchased um, at a thrift shop while we were visiting uh, my family in December. And then I have my large windswept shawl on. We've been outside today playing for quite a while and just I feel like coming inside we had all of the windows open while we were gone. Um, so it just got really really cool in here um, and so I have layers on for now so they might be slowly shed as the podcast goes on. Uh, we, I keep the windows open all day every day even in the winter. Not just because I'm dyeing yarn. It's just, I don't know, I feel like I'm always moving around doing something whether I'm cleaning, whether I'm playing with the girls, whether I'm dyeing now, whether I'm doing something and I really really love fresh air. Um, it's so funny, Danny and I from Little Bobbin's podcast were talking about this, that we both just feel kind of suffocated by too much warmth in a house, like heat. While I enjoy heat and I enjoy being warm, I don't want to freeze, obviously, I cannot have the heat cranked too high inside of a house. It makes me insane. And I think I talked about this before. I think I talked about a flat being or a house being too warm when we returned from my parents, because I can remember some of the comments that you guys made about that, that some of you have very warm houses. So, um, I have um, been doing a bit of knitting this week, I feel like. My Molly Weasley sock recipe socks are all finished. The pattern for this will be going out on Wednesday, so you guys can look forward to that. It will be finished and complete Wednesday of this week. So I knit up a pair of um, the male socks. There will be five different sizes available in this pattern, which is, I think, really nice and really exciting. So you can knit a pair of baby's socks, child socks, and then kind of like an older teenage sock. Um, a female or kind of a more mother, a woman, and then a men's father type of sock. So um, yeah, I decided to do two different takes on it. This is a Homespun House's Piper colorway and um, yeah, this is just some rest from some Mrs. Babs yarn and then this is some yarn from Maya of the Wool Barn. So I knit up two different samples in that. Like I said, here are the the two ends still need to be woven in, <laughs> um, but I love them. It's a really, really fun pattern. And the sad thing is, is the uh, the Piper sock yarn, you can't see it so well in the pattern. You can definitely see that there's a texture. And maybe that's just because the socks are so small. Maybe if I had knit a bigger pair in the Piper yarn, it would have worked out. But um, I still love the way that, that these knit up. I think they're adorable and they will fit Ruby. She is um, will be 10 months old this month, so how crazy is that? I cannot believe that in May Ruby is going to be two years old. She is standing up and walking on everything. She tries to let go of things and then slowly plops on her booty. It's really, really cute. Um, but yeah, so those are the two kind of samples that I knit up in those. Love them. They were a lot of fun to knit. The baby socks knit up so quickly. That's definitely, I feel like if you have a good amount of time in your day, you can definitely knit up a pair of those socks um, quite quickly, I think, within a couple of hours. Like I said, if you have a day and you kind of know how to knit socks, I don't think you'll have any problem getting those finished in a day. However, this sock pattern is not for a newborn baby. I would not recommend socks that don't have ties for newborns. I know Ruby, Elodie, and so many kids cannot keep their socks on. So that's why I have my Susie Dale sock pattern. 
and I do not have a pair to show you, but they just, it's different than this, definitely. Uh, the pattern is written completely different. Um, different stitch count, different closure on the toe, just, they're different. And um, those have ties around the ankles, and I love those. I still use those for Ruby sometimes, but now that she's kind of more mobile, I think that a classic sock is, isn't so bad. Uh, although, she is obsessed with the ties on the Susie Dale socks, so I have to put those in knots, because she could play with these forever. So sometimes I'll let her wear them, just because I know she's going to get pure entertainment out of them. Otherwise, mm, it's not the best for pulling out those strings. So not your Susie Dale socks if you guys have some of those. The next thing, oh my goodness, I do not have my two hats to show you guys. Hmm. I'll grab those a little bit later. So the next thing, since I finished those two pairs of socks, what do you do? I cast on another pair of socks. So inside of my Alex Collins bag, I have some really fun socks that I started. I had considered making another pair of the Molly Weasley socks um, in the Piper colorway for myself, but then I thought, I have all of these random mini skeins. This isn't all that I have. I have a little bit more than this, so I don't have a huge, huge, huge abundance. Um, and then these are some balls. I don't even know if you can see. I hope you can see. These are some balls of um, mini skates that I already wound and have knit into my blanket. And they're just ones that I really like. So I decided to take some of those. And these are kind of all in shades of pinks, beige, browns, blues, purples. Um, and this is my um, fog colorway that I knit for the cuff, the heel, and I'll do the toe that way, so. Um, and I just took a bunch of just random little mini skeins. Let's show you guys the colors that I'll do. I think this is all of them. So right here. Just some little balls that were already wound, and I thought that those colors looked really pretty together. Um, and so I will knit a little patchwork sock, I'm calling them, out of this. And I think that they're really cute. I think I'm going to knit them the same. And I know that they'll look different because a lot of these are opal yarns and regia yarns. Um, some of them are hand dyed yarns like this one and this one. Um, but these two are opal. And I know that the colorways will be different because the changing will be different in the colors. But still, I think that's okay. I just, I still want to keep it somewhat the same, even though I know it will still be different. Why? I don't even know. So when I finish picking up all of these gusset stitches around here, then I think I'll go ahead and cast the second sock on, just because I don't want to forget the order that I did it in. Not that it even really makes a difference. Um, and I don't know. I just feel like doing it that way this time. I don't normally do my socks like that. I usually knit one and then knit the other, and... I never really have second sock syndrome. I can remember quite a while ago when I was knitting socks I did, but this time around, I don't know, lately in the last while I haven't. So those are a lot of fun. I'm really, really enjoying those. I knit these, I feel like quite quickly, just the, um, the cuff, the leg, and then the start of the heel. So um, I just do a classic, knit, slip one, and then knit across, and then slip one, purl one, slip one, purl one on the other side. So there is that. And those are a lot of fun. I haven't knit on those in a couple of days. I have no idea why. I think I've just been really busy um, just doing stuff. Yesterday, goodness, what did we even do yesterday? Uh, yesterday, Adrienne and I went shopping for the first time just for some spring clothes. She's really grown out of a lot of her clothes and I've always picked out the clothes that she's worn so I thought that it would be fun for her this time to go with me. So we went into the city and we got some fun clothes and we got some ice cream on the way home. We played at a park which she thought was really fun. Uh, yeah, it was a really really nice day. It was so sunny yesterday. I feel like lately we've had a lot of sun 
uh, I think it was last week, we had an entire week of sun and it was so fantastic. It just, it changes your mood completely, as I know that you all know, but it was just so fantastic to be in the living room and playing with Ruby or listening to music because music is on every second of my life. I, I love music. It's something that I've never really talked about or shared on the podcast, but it is a huge, huge part of me. Um, so I always have music on and just having the sunshine in and listening to that and, and dyeing yarn or just knitting, like I said, playing with Ruby, playing with Edity when she comes home. Oh, it's just been wonderful having that sun there. And I love that it's here so much longer in the day. I know that you guys in America have already had your clocks ticked back a little. We haven't had that happen yet, but um, that's going to be crazy. I am so curious how the girls' schedules will adjust to that because Ruby wakes up at 5, five o'clock, 5.30 in the morning. So she's awake very early. And um, Robert and I go to bed... I would say between 10 and midnight, so it's, it can be exhausting. It can be exhausting waking up three times or so in the night to breastfeed and then having to get up out of bed at 5.30. We kind of take turns. I would say Robert gets up with, with Ruby half of the time and I get up the other half of the time, so it's really, really nice. Um, yeah. So. <clears throat> this is funny. There was this one night that Robert was, he was at some friends. We, he was at a friend's house. They were watching soccer or football, as you call it here. And um, I was doing a little bit of knitting. What was I knitting on? Maybe these? I was maybe knitting on these? Whatever I was knitting on, I finished. So I'm guessing it was these. And speaking of finishing, I still need to pick this up again and work on it. <clears throat> but... I had finished those socks and I thought, you know what, you haven't knit a bird of happiness in so long and I was looking in here at all of these pre-wound balls of yarn and I saw this one from Sarah of Love Sockwool and I thought, that is just so beautiful. I am so drawn to this colorway, I love it. It's very simple, it's pink, blue, and purple and I just think it's so pretty. I absolutely adore it. I've knit two squares with it in my blanket. I love it so much. And I thought, as I said, you haven't knit a bird of happiness in so long. So I cast on. <laughs> and then Robert came home. So that didn't go anywhere. I have my beautiful Alex Collins lavender sachet in here. I can remember on one of uh, Melody from The Mandarin's podcast. If you guys haven't checked it out, you should definitely. It's a video podcast. Um, she was talking about this, and it just reminded her of the lavender fields. I'm pretty sure it was lavender fields um, from back home, where she comes from. And I love that thought. I love that thought that... that this is reminding her of that. It's so funny how scents can take you back to so many things because when I'm smelling this, I'm thinking of my grandma. Definitely, definitely thinking of my grandma. It just smells so beautiful. So, that is that one. And those are all of the projects that I've been working on. Um, Think. Ah, the hat. So I finished the hat. I cannot find Anodies anywhere. I completely apologize because I wanted to show you guys both of them next to each other. Um, Anodie has been wearing hers. So this is Robert's. And it is definitely, definitely bigger. So much, much, much more stretchy. I did this on. Oh, goodness. I think this had to have been a 2.5 five millimeter needle and I cast on 204 stitches instead of 208 or did I do or I mean 212 I'm quite sure so this is my mirth colorway and 
in one whole skein, which is 400 meters, I think it's 436 yards, I was able to get the two hats out of it. So that worked really, really nicely. I thought about even writing up just a father-daughter hat recipe. Just, it wouldn't be a slouchy hat. You wouldn't be able to get a slouchy hat out of um, one skein. You could if you didn't make the ribbing so long. But Robert really wanted that kind of a, a tighter fit, extra warmth for the ears, fingering weight hat. So um, I had 20 grams of yarn left when I was finished. And then I wound four mini skeins with those 20 grams. So four lucky people will be getting those randomly in their packages. So I will be having mini skein sets in the shop soon. I've been winding mini skeins for that just because I know a lot of people have been asking those. And they are fun. I really, really honestly enjoy winding mini skeins. I just love to sit kind of in a relaxing moment and take a skein of yarn. It's the most fun when it's a colorway that I haven't used before or that I haven't knit with and I can really just wind it into mini skeins and just kind of see how the colors play with each other. I've had quite a few questions um, about what is reskeining yarn. Reskeining yarn is, so for example, this is uh, Berlin Sunrise. I'm going to get these off of here. I feel like they're getting wet. So this is Berlin Sunrise. That's okay. <clears throat> and this is not reskeined. So this is kind of exactly what it looks like as I dye it. And um, this is on a new base that I have. It's a gold Stellina base. It's one that I will be now carrying in the shop. I love it. I adore it. Um, yeah. So... I've dyed up quite a few different colorways on the Gold Stellina base. So I've dyed up Mermaid of the Black Lake, right here, Mermaid of the Black Lake. I have dyed up Piper, I have dyed up Berlin Sunset. This one isn't, I grabbed a totally bad skein to show you guys because all of the color is on the inside of the skein it looks like. Um, and then, this is still drying, but I've dyed up some, whoops, let me grab this. I've dyed up some Mirth. On the Gold Stellina. And then... I've dyed up some Half-Blood prints. I'm definitely going to have to dye up one of these, or knit up one of these skeins into socks. I don't know what, um, but I love this base so much, and I now have my Evolution colorway socks that I'm wearing right now from Linnae Yarns with the Silver Selena, and I have Pandora from Volan Vine on the gold Stellina, and I just love these socks. I love knitting with the yarn. It's, it is so funny because I have never, <laughs> I've always thought that I wasn't a person who is really into Stellina. I'm sorry I'm moving all over the place, but I'm just grabbing yarn. <laughs> You're probably wondering, what sort of exercises is she doing over there? Um, yeah, so, I've never been a person who really liked Gold Stellina yarn, and it kind of started that I was knitting my <sighs> whipper wool. What was the name of the shawl? There was a shawl that I was knitting. I think, oh, I don't even remember by who it was. There was a shawl that I was knitting, and it was in glitter yarn from Linnae Yarns. It was the Evil Ocean and then another colorway. And I don't even know why I decided to knit the shawl in these glitter yarns. Anyway, I knit it. I loved knitting with it. It was like butter between my fingers. And I started to wear the shawl, and then I thought, you know what, this, these colors aren't really right for me. So I gifted it to someone else who the colors were perfect for. And then the second time I knit with it was for the socks that I'm wearing, and then the Pandora socks that I just finished not too long ago. 
And I don't know, I have just started to fall in love with it. I don't know how much I would wear a glitter shawl, but I feel like for socks, I can totally knit a thousand Stellina, not glitter, I guess. Glitter sounds cheap, to be honest. But Stellina socks, I, I adore it. So I kind of feel like my next pair of socks will be something on a Stellina base. So I have the Stellina fingering weight yarn now in the shop, and I also have singles. Ah, I'm so excited. I love singles. I think that they are my favorite yarn, hands down, for shawls. I love the way it knits up. I love the way that it works up. I love the way that it feels. It's 100% superwash merino, and it is heavenly soft. So I cannot wait to um, get some of that in the shop. I have so much yarn to add to the shop. Um, Once this podcast is up, I'm pretty sure it should all be in there. There should be so much yarn in the shop. I think there are about 150, 175 skeins that are going up in there. So awesome for you guys. You will have a really, really nice choice. I've started to dye a lot of tonals. So this month I'm introducing 30 plus tonals to the shop so that you can pair them with... Um, the speckled yarns with the variegated yarns, and I'm doing it kind of on all different bases. So definitely look forward to that. But before I start talking about the things going into the shop, I wanted to give you guys the names of the people who um, who have won from our fingering weight knit, for our, from our fingering weight February knit along because I never drew names for that, and I just feel like it is the most terrible thing ever. So the first person who won is um, post 401 who is Miss Mothballs. So Mrs. Mothballs or Miss Mothballs and she doesn't have a name but she's from Germany so Miss Mothballs you have won a skein of Mint Rain hand dyed yarns and this is her soft sock in Claire's Hunting Capelet colorway. It is 100% Superwash Merino, 490 yards. So it is quite a bit, and it's a beautiful tonal, very, very soft um, mauve. The next name that I drew is Bio Apfelkan. This looks like another German one. Yeah, who, who's from Berlin, Germany, so that's awesome. Uh, she doesn't have a name either, but Bio Apfelkan has won a skein of coloring book yarns. I have this yarn myself. I've been waiting to knit something in it. This is the September colorway, and this is an 80-20 Superwash Merino nylon yarn, 400 yards. So that is going to make some beautiful socks, and Bio Apfelkan knit a pair of gorgeous, absolutely gorgeous socks. So the final person who won, Luchi Lily. And Luchi Lily's name is Lucy and she is from Spokane. I'm curious if that's Texas. I was born in Texas. Um, but Lucy, you won a skein of O Loops. I have been getting a lot of emails of people who They'll write me an email and they'll ask if their um, if their order has gone through. Like one thing though, please don't write me through Ravelry. Please send me um, an email at a homespunhouse at gmail.com. I have so many Ravelry messages that it is so likely that I won't see your your Ravelry message until could even be two weeks to a month after it is sent. Um, just because I have so many work emails that I answer before my Ravelry emails. Um, so those definitely get priority. I get so many emails of people asking me um, if their order has gone through because they notice that the, the yarn that they just bought is in stock in the shop. But I am dyeing so much yarn in the week 
Um, I dye anywhere from 20 to 50 skeins of yarn a day that it is very likely that that yarn is being restocked in the shop. So um, I would say don't worry about that. If you buy something and then you think, okay, that's really strange. I just bought that and now there's the same amount of yarn or there's even more amount of yarn. Did my order go through? If you've received uh, an invoice from PayPal and if you've received something from a homespun house, your, your order has definitely gone through. There's nothing to worry about. So some of the really fun yarns that we're going to have in the shop this month are all of our um, tonals, all of our tonal yarns. So this is barley, this is bohemian, and this is plum. Oh, I don't even remember what I've named all of these. I'm going to have to get to know these, these colorways a little bit better. I know this is fog. Is this one? I think this one is coal or maybe that's ash. This one's lychee. This is buttermilk. This one I cannot remember. Hmm. Some really fun spring colors. I just wanted some colors that you could pair really well together. I love this really light peachy pearl toned one. I think that's so pretty. And then I have this one, which is Kaleidoscope. Ado D is obsessed with kaleidoscopes. Oh my goodness. She plays with hers all kaleidoscopes and binoculars. It is so funny. She is looking out the window into the neighbor's window with her binoculars all the time in it. But they just think it is the weirdest thing. So kaleidoscope. And this beautiful gray green tonal. That would look really lovely with something like that, I feel like. Could even pair it with you know something even a bit more crazy. Kaleidoscope you could make pretty crazy like that. You know, there are so many cool colors that you can pull from here. It's so insane the way that different, you know, colorways make um, different colors pop. And I thought that it would be really nice to pair a glitter yarn with, like, our Olsen base. The Olsen base is very soft, BFL um, base. But also look really beautiful with barley. So a lot of really, really fun pairings to do so many new colorways. I hope that you guys are really excited about um, all of the tonos that we're going to be carrying. I have another yarn line that I'm very, very, very excited about. And I am thinking that in April there will be a whole new colorway of that as well, a whole new line of that. So I think that there will be 30 plus colors in that range. So I'm very excited to announce that to you. Who knows, it could even come this month. So that's really, really exciting. Um, I wanted to talk about, I feel like knitting from stash. I have, I don't know what is going on with me. I don't know if it's because I'm dying yarn, but I have so much yarn in my stash that is not a homespun house yarn. I don't even have any a homespun house yarn in my stash. I just kind of, if I'm doing a round of dyes, like for example, when I did uh, this round of dyes and I dyed up um, Piper, and this is on Polworth, 100% Superwash Polworth. Um, I really wanted to see how Polworth knit up because I've never knit with Polworth before. And I thought, you know what, I'm just going to pull that one out and I'm going to skein it up and I'm going to knit on it. Knit a pair of socks with it. So, um, 
I just kind of pull a homespun house yarns out. When I see them, I feel inspired by them. I don't actually keep certain skeins in my stash. I don't have any in my actual stash. I'm looking over here because I have a massive um, 25 square cabinet from Ikea over here that has uh, all of my undyed yarn, all of my stash yarn, my fiber, and um, some fabrics. I have most of my work fabrics under here. But I have just, I have been so inspired since, since I've started dyeing yarn, I feel, to really, really use my stash yarn. I feel like, and I don't think there's anything wrong with buying new yarn because there was definitely a time where I was buying and buying and buying and buying and hardly knitting through my stash, I feel like. Which is awesome because now I feel like I have this beautiful stash that I can knit so much, you know, so many projects from. I look at my library, I look at my favorites and I say, oh my goodness, I want to knit this. And then I can go and look at my stash and be completely inspired by it. I don't think, you know, since last September when I started dyeing yarns, actually more October when I started dyeing yarns, it's crazy that it hasn't been that long. But um, I don't think since then I have come and looked at my stash and thought, ooh, I may be... I feel like there's something missing or I feel like there's something lacking. I think that there will come a point to that, but I bet I have three, 200, 300 skeins of yarn in my stash and all of it is indie dyed yarn. Um, uh, maybe 50 skeins, maybe 50 skeins of that are not. Maybe they are like, you know, sock yarns like Regia and Drops, um, some, oof, what is this? this really popular brand. They have like the rag tweeds and they have, you guys are screaming it out at me, I know. I won't remember what it's called. It's maybe like a four letter word. No idea. Anyway, it's really nice sock yarn. Um, I love Regia sock yarn. I love trekking, I love opal. I love all of those hard wearing sock yarns. I just think they are so fantastic. But yeah, so there hasn't been a time that I go there and I feel like, what should I be knitting with? I can't find any inspiration here. And I have so much yarn that is caked up. Not so much. I have a box that's maybe just like this big, filled with yarn cakes in all different sizes. And right now I'm really looking at it and I'm trying to kind of work my way through it. I'm, I feel like I have kind of a fear, maybe in the last month of going into skeins and making cakes with those just because I see this big box of cake, caked yarn and I feel like you should really be doing something with those, you know? Which is where these socks came in. And I think I used all of the yarn except for this mini skein. So that's all that's left. Perfect for a mini skein. I think this is maybe a 15, no, I, mean, I would say maybe a, a 10 gram mini skein. So, so yeah, um, I've had a really great time talking with you guys today. I always enjoy the time that I can sit down and spend a little bit of time with, with all of you and um, share what I've been doing, share what I've been doing knitting wise. Hopefully next time I finish this weaving, get a new one on the, the board and um, I can't wait until I can sew project bags. I feel like I have been missing, 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 missing being able to sew up some project bags. I have some fabric that's cut up. Um, it just really needs to be able to sit down and sew. But I feel like while Ruby's napping, it's really hard for me to get that time to sit down because with sewing, I really want to sit down and have a good amount of time to do it. Whereas dyeing yarn, it's easy to go and come back and go and come back and um, kind of multitask in a way. So, so yeah, I can't wait. That will probably be realistically when I'm able to pr to make quite a bit of bags. Will be uh, mid May, I'm guessing. 
Uh, and like I said, from, from then on, if you see some in the shop, it will be an extreme surprise to myself as well. Um, but I'm really, really looking forward to being able to do that. So I am guessing I'll see you guys again in two weeks' time. So until then, I hope that you guys have a wonderful, wonderful Easter. We'll be visiting Robert's parents, and I think it will be so nice. I know Elodie is pretty excited. Ruby doesn't even know. Uh, and I hope the weather is warm and sunny. I'm sure it will be. It's always sunny where they live. They always get the sun, those lucky people. So, so yeah. Um, see you guys later. Bye.